Hello, Westford. The school committee took the first step this week in approving a policy for transgender students. A bomb threat brought public safety officials to the Stony Brook School on September 21st. And three weeks of cold nights created a beautiful crop of apples at the town's orchards. I'm Ira Kelts, and it's time for Westford Cat News. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to our free online daily news publication. Please visit westfordcatnews.org newsletter to sign up. And if your civic or charitable organization has an event coming up, send your announcement to news at westfordcat.org. And now, the news. School committee members unanimously approved the first step in adopting a policy to accommodate transgender and gender nonconforming students at the town's public schools. Member Avery Adam gave a presentation outlining key terms used to refer to the students and noting that state law bans discrimination of transgender people in public bathrooms. In our policy, which is yet to be named, but in the new lettering it would be ACA1, um, we identified key terminology, what gender expression is versus identity versus gender nonconforming, transgender, um, and then we went on to how schools and the staff and teachers would handle um, student transitions should it occur during school, um, privacy, records. Real important one that um, I read over and over was the use of pronouns, he, she, and they. Um, and making things much more um, fluid for the students. Facilities, as we heard, bathrooms, locker rooms, uh, those are the sort of things that our schools, I think, have already handled uh, phenomenally. Um, athletics, where, what kind of phys ed and athletic programs um, students can participate in. And then a dress code, um, to make sure that it is not gender bias, um, which I know had already come up when our policy in the handbook had come up. And I think um, one of the, I think the funniest ones that we identified was the graduation robes. And that that was clearly um, gender based. Um, and we would like to look at that at some point. School committee members will revisit the policy again at their next meeting. A threatening message discovered inside the boys' bathroom at Stony Brook School on September 21st led to the building being searched from top to bottom and backpacks being checked the next day. The threat referenced a bomb, prompting a call to public safety officials. Fortunately, school was just ending, so only a few students and teachers remained in the building while the search went on. This is not a joking matter. We have to make sure that the building is secure. All of us take this very seriously said Superintendent Everett V. Olson. No bomb was found inside the school and Olson said the message was apparently a hoax. Handwriting samples are being checked and footage from security cameras is being scrutinized. Westford Cat will bring you updates as more develops. Here's News Director Joyce Polino Crane with a highlight from the Selectmen's meeting. Thanks, Ira. Town Engineer Paul Starrett gave an overview of something we all want to know more about, how the many roadway construction projects are going and when they'll be finished. Here's Starrett. Paul Starrett, town engineer. Uh, yes, we do have uh, multiple uh, major infrastructure projects around town, which is good, especially since the state is paying for half of them. But uh, it does create some uh, com some transportation hassles for inconveniences for people. Uh, we are very aware of that, and we do honestly try to minimize that as much as possible. Uh, on Main Street, they're scheduled to start redepth uh, paving, a uh, full depth paving, a uh, uh, full depth reconstruction of the actual roadway, taking out the surface uh, and grading it down. Uh, that should begin, uh, if not the end of this week, then next week, and then following that, of course, we'll the fine grading and the actual paving so that's good and on schedule 
that will be buttoned up at substantial completion uh, by early in November. On Plain Road, we have good, made good progress out there on the sidewalk that will connect all of the Nab Nasset or most of the Nab Nasset uh, neighborhoods south of the lake uh, through to the Nab Nasset School. That will be probably uh, in the next two weeks completed. And then in the town center, which is probably the most visible to all of the commuters in Westford that pass through, uh, we're, we're working with the highway department uh, to get the, to match up the complete streets projects with the town's own regular paving maintenance. Uh, so the good news is that uh, early through, through October, things will get increasingly better. And then uh, at the Tadmuck intersection, we know that they'll, they're expected to start paving uh, on Thursday or Friday this week. If, uh, if not, if the grading is not ready, then Monday and Tuesday of the following. So that will probably be the biggest relief of, of traffic congestion in the town. And uh, then we'll be back at it next summer. Later in the meeting, selectmen voted unanimously to follow the recommendation of the 12 North Main Street Task Force and award the contract for the disposition of the building known as 12 North Main Street to Yule Development Incorporated. And that would be subject to negotiation. Their decision came after hearing supportive comments from two Graniteville residents. I'm Nancy Bissell and I'm at 11 North Main Street and I look down on the mill daily. Um, actually all my neighbors, I have told them that, that, that Chris Yule has, has uh, stated that he's interested and, and everyone is very excited about it we, because of what he's done in, in Forge Village. It, it, it would be such an improvement over what is there now. I mean, the only other thought, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of caveats in this, or in this response, and I, you know, knowing the land, knowing the risks to have, I appreciate there's a lot of risks, so I think it is right to go to a negotiation and work through the details, because there's a lot of details to work through here. Jane Calvin, 64 Broadway Street. I, I would strongly encourage you to um, to help us work with with Chris to move this forward. Um, this is not necessarily the appropriate saying, but I think the devil you know is a lot better than the devil you don't know. And I think we're really fortunate to have someone local respond to this, and someone that cares about the area um, knows you know knows people in the neighborhood. Um, <clears throat> so I, I just feel like even though there's lots of gaps. We all know there's lots of gaps in this, um, but I, I think I, I think we have something that's workable, um, and I'd really encourage us to go forward. Um. 12 North Main Street is an abandoned, dilapidated mill building that was once part of the Abbott Mill. It's located in the Graniteville section. Ewell Development rehabilitated the Abbott Mill located on Pleasant Street in Forge Village. To watch the entire selectman's meeting, visit westfordcat.org. Back to you, Ira. Now for our feature of the week. Farmer Dave at the town-owned Hill Orchard is saying this year's crop of apples are the reddest he's ever seen. It's probably one of the most beautiful crops in years, he said. Farmer Dave, otherwise known as Dave Dumarsk, said three weeks of cold nights brought out the vivid colors. And while it's not a bumper crop in terms of quantity, there are plenty of apples available for picking, from honey crisps to Paula Reds. Apple picking is available weekends this fall from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and the orchard's located at 4 Hunt Road in Westford. The Westford League of Women Voters sponsored a panel discussion on September 27th entitled The Opioid Epidemic and Its Impact on Westford. Here's a highlight. Um, and this is where I'd like to show you that Westford is actually not immune to this epidemic at all, and the epidemic is growing. Um, in 2012 and 13, we did not have any deaths in town. Uh, 2014, we had two. 2015, we uh, did not have any. 16, we had three. And in 2017, on my slide, I have three listed, but I just found out today through the chief that we actually recently had another one. So that number has now gone higher than 2016. So this clearly is something that we have to address in town. The entire presentation can be viewed at westfordcat.org. 
Here's Superintendent Bill Olson with news from the schools. Hi, this is Superintendent of Schools Bill Olson with the school system update. We've had some warm temperatures this week in the latter part of September, so I've been wearing my tropical tie and uh, we know that cooler temperatures uh, will be coming. And uh, it's been a great start to the school year so far. Uh, Kerry and I are, are visiting the schools. We're continuing to visit the schools. Uh, we get out to them as we can to greet all of the staff and all of the students. And we meet everyone, uh, teachers, our administrators, food service workers, our custodians, our nurses, and all the students, because everyone matters. Everyone plays a very important part in the development of our very positive and progressive culture in the Western Public Schools, and we enjoy talking with them, and we enjoy even more so listening to them. Um, we have had uh, a homework report that was given by uh, Dr. Clary, along with uh, Susan Dubois, the NASA principal, and so the report was given to the uh, school committee recently and presented to myself. Uh, I'll be working with the school committee, uh, receiving their input, along with the input of some of our staff and Dr. Clary in the development of regulations and the development of a revised homework policy. You know, homework is one of those issues that um, is very personal. And we may come up with uh, regulations and I may propose regulations that uh, may be very popular with some people but may not be popular with others. But here's an example of where I need to, I need to observe and be respectful of the over 1,000 survey respondents that provide us, provided us with very valuable information about the quantity of homework, the quality of homework, uh, when it should be given, when it should not be given, and I want to respect that, uh, that input, certainly. Um, in progress at the present time, uh, I'm working on my goals for the 2017-2018 school year, and I'll be presenting those to the school committee at the first meeting in October. Uh, I'm working with uh, our finance director, Kathy Auth, on the development of the five-year capital plan. We will be presenting that to the school committee on uh, October 10th and to the townwide capital plan committee on October 20th. And we'll begin the development of the fiscal 2019 budget. And I know it's hard to imagine. We're still in 2017, just the, the beginning of the 2017-2018 school year. But we're already planning ahead for the fiscal 2019 budget, which pertains to the 2018-2019 school year. Look forward to seeing you next time, and thank you for watching. Rekha Sharma brings you this week's health tip. Hi everyone, I'm Rekha Sharma, your Ayurveda practitioner, back with a new health tip for Westford Cat News. Ayurveda is a science of life, helping you heal better and boost your natural immunity in natural ways. Today I'm going to talk about nectarines. We are close to the fall season and it's time to boost immunity to avoid inflammations. Nectarines are rich in vitamin A and vitamin C. They are excellent in fiber and antioxidant. It helps to regulate blood pressure. It has zero fat and zero cholesterol. They are excellent for skin against UV radiations. Nectarines can be used to prepare pies, jams and jellies, and also you can add to fruit salads and cakes. If you have dry skin, you can use nectarine pulp with cucumber juice to get the benefits. So add some nectarines in your diet to get the benefits. If you have any allergies, please contact your healthcare provider before consuming. I'll be back with a new health tip Bye for now. Summer slipped into autumn last week, but temperatures stayed warm this week and the sun shone brightly. Let's see what Joe is forecasting for the upcoming week. Hello in Westford, this is Joe Sexy. The weather forecast for this weekend, we have October 2nd. We have mild temperatures and dry weather, and for the first week of October. Here's what's coming up. That was in Western Weather. Have a great week, everyone. Cooper, an eight-year-old American Staffordshire Terrier mix, is available for adoption at the Lowell Humane Society. 
Here's Patty Stocker with more information. Meet this handsome big boy Cooper, an eight-year-old terrier American Staffordshire mix available now for adoption at the Lowell Humane Society. Here's marketing and fundraising manager Crystal Arnott with more. This is Cooper, and Cooper is an eight-year-old mixed breed dog. Um, he has a lot of the bully traits, so he's probably an American Staffordshire Terrier mix of some sort. He's quite big, as you can see, and really could afford a diet, um, but we're working on that here and taking him on lots of walks and getting him lots of exercise. Um, this poor guy was surrendered because his um, owners, unfortunately, were a little bit older and they started to become a little more ailing and they could no longer care for him anymore. Uh, they themselves had to go into assisted living, um, so there was no one left home to care for this big guy. They loved him very much, um, but unfortunately there wasn't anyone left at the house to take care of him anymore. They were very sad to have to surrender him, but knew we would take good care of him. Um, he is a big boy who doesn't really love other dogs. He would just uh, rather avoid other dogs and ignore them. So I think we'd, he would be more comfortable in a home where he could be the only dog. Uh, but he has lived in a home with cats and he did very well with the cat in the home. So I think a home with savvy cats that have been around dogs before would be just fine. And he's very sweet and would do well with calm, gentle children who are dog savvy. Um, he can be a little nervous when he first meets people, but the kids who know dogs and understand, you know, that sometimes they need a little space would be just fine with him. He's a big cuddle bug and he likes to go on walks despite his large size. He will go for nice long walks with you. Come here. He's not a big um, player on his own, but if you get toys out for him, he really does enjoy playing. Ready? Ready? Go get it. Go get it. Come on. Bring it here. Come on. Get it. Bring that toy over here. Good boy. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> If you'd like to learn more about Cooper or any of the other pets available now for adoption, or to find out how to donate, volunteer, foster a pet, or fill their wish list, go to LowellHumaneSociety.org or visit them at 951 Broadway Street in Lowell. Call 978-452-7781. For Westford Cat, I'm Patty Stalker. Here's our Marketing Outreach Director, Sarah Fletcher, with suggestions for things to do this week around Westford. Thanks, Ira. The second annual Small Household Appliance Sale is taking place at the Cameron Senior Center from October 2nd to the 6th. Also on sale will be lamps and linens. Trudy's Boutique, featuring household decor and clothing, will be open. Hours of operation are 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Monday, October 2nd and Wednesday, October 4th. The sale will also take place from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Tuesday, October 3rd and Thursday, October 5th. The event is sponsored by the Friends of the Cameron Senior Center. For more information, call 978-692-5523. Westford's lovable Scream Park, Witches Woods, is now open for the Halloween season from Thursdays to Sundays through October 31st. Purchase tickets, $37 each, online or at the door from 6.30 to 10.30 p.m. Hayride start, start at 7 p.m. Witches Woods is located at 79 Powers Road. For more information, visit witcheswoods.com. The Fletcher Library is holding a book sale on Saturday, October 14th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m and a half-price sale on Sunday, October 15th from 2 to 4 p.m. A preview sale for Friends of the Library takes place on Friday, October 13th from 6.30 to 9 p.m. If you'd like to become a friend and get a sneak peek at the offerings, you'll find membership applications at the door that evening. The sale will include print and audiobooks, vinyl records, and DVDs. All proceeds benefit the library. The event is sponsored by the Friends. For more information, visit westfordlibrary.org. I'm Sarah Fletcher for Westford Cat News. Back to you, Ira. That's it for this week, Westford. We leave you with images of the town's beaches in these early days of autumn. We'll see you next week. <laughs>